Today, let us celebrate the great strides we have made, demonstrated so clearly in the incoming parliament to raise the prominence and contribution of women in public life. Let us work together to fundamentally and forever change the power relations between men and women in our country. Let us end the dominion that men claim over women, the denial of opportunity, the abuse and the violence, the neglect and the disregard for each other's human rights. Let us build a truly non-racial society, one that belongs to all South Africans and which all South Africans belong. Let us build a society that protects and value those who are vulnerable and who for too long have been rendered marginal. Well, presumably all of us were watching on Saturday as President Sir Ramaphosa said those words during his inaugural speech, making it clear that in his administration, equality will be a verb and not a talk shop. Does this mean he will appoint more women in his cabinet? Well, that remains to be seen. Uh, Sunday night, the presidency released a note saying the country's first citizen will only release the names of those who have made it to his cabinet later in the week and we all await but let me now introduce our guests in the studio we have tamara matebula thank you so much for making the time to join us the acting chairperson uh, of the commission for gender equality we're also joined by dr corne davis um, uh, from the university of johannesburg thank you so much for making the time in cape town we're joined by mabel nedeloff sitole the program officer of building bridges at the nelson mandela school of public governance at the university of Cape Town and in Pretoria we're joined by Sia Gentile who is the president of Not In My Name a gender activist uh, men's group. Let's start with you uh, Mabel. Um, what empirical evidence exists that shows that benefits of gender equality in a democratic society like South Africa would work? Well um I think there's that old proverb that already says that if you empower a woman, you empower a whole village. And um, uh, uh, research across Africa has shown that when women have access to economic opportunities, it empowers their children and improves sustainable livelihoods for them and for um, future generations to come. So women's issues uh, in South Africa as well have uh, had significant gains in the since independence, really. Yeah. See, With uh, South Africa being celebrated amongst the top 20 countries that are working towards gender equality. Absolutely. Sia, yeah, let's bring you into the conversation here. You listened to the president on uh, Saturday. We just played a clip of what he said about his ideals for a gender equal society. What's uh, the response of Not In My Name? Thank you very much. Uh, it's not in my name. We welcome the comments and the commitment that the president has made. And we are fully rallying behind him as South Africa's lobby group and uh, gender activism group. Um, it is indeed uh, possible. We have seen uh, other countries doing it, in especially uh, African countries uh, like Rwanda uh, as well as Ethiopia. So we are looking and waiting in anticipation and in the hope that the president's cabinet will actually um, have uh, an equal representation, or at least it will show improvement uh, of, of representation of, of, of women um, so that we move forward progressively as a, as a country uh, in the fight against gender-based violence and, and, and gender inequality. So it's important that it starts there at the highest decision-making level of government um, in governance, and, and then it, it goes down uh, to all the spheres of government and all the three legs of government, as well as to ordinary citizens. Dr. Davis, how do we educate society to be receptive to women as authoritative voices? Well, you see, what we, what we have to realize is that we are all stakeholders. So everybody has to buy into the concept of women empowerment. 
We have started at our educational institutions. Um, UJ hosted the first LBGTQI Plus Summit through September 2018 to start sensitizing and raising awareness because the issue has become far more complex. It's not just a matter of male over female domination. We have 71 gender identities. Now let's talk How do you transverse gender. through all of those? Exactly. Yes. It's become a very complex issue and we need to sensitize. They call it the gender spectrum now. Exactly. <laughs> so where does that take us with regards to gender equality? Mm -hmm. We have now got to acknowledge that there's a lot more at stake and there's a lot more discrimination than just inequality of women in the workplace or even gender-based violence, which is, you know, in, in the statistics for Gauteng, seven out of ten women in Gauteng during the course of a lifetime. Yep. So, so besides those, those aspects of gender-based violence, we've now got to con con concentrate on gender identity and embrace it and sensitize our society about it. What you're talking about speaks to something called gender dysphoria, yeah. uh, where people are, are differently identifying themselves. How do we speak to their entire population as a president? It's going to take some time because there's a lot of ignorance at the moment. There's a lot of people who do not understand. They do not understand, for example, the concept of people born with both sets of genitalia. They don't understand the genetic component of it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They don't understand how these people have to shape their identity and what it's like actually to be discriminated against to that extent. So there's a lot of information required, a lot mm -hmm. of education mm -hmm. required, and all stakeholders government, non-government, business in particular. Yeah. Let's bring uh, Tamara Matebula into the conversation mm -hmm. here. As the Commission for Gender Equality, um, the president has given his commitment. Do you sense that generally in politics there is an acknowledgement of feminism and the importance of equality in that space? Thank you for that question, um, Desiree. Um, basically, I think where we come from um, as the constitution uh, of South Africa, um, we know that um, issues of um, gender equality emanates from the constitution of the Republic of South Africa of 1994. And if you look at the constitution, chapter 2, and the Bill of Rights, which yeah. forms the cornerstone of our democracy, this is where we are beginning to unpack what these rights are and we know that if we're talking about rights that are enshrined in the constitution we are talking about equality and equality before the law and we all say that everyone is equal before the law and we are all, all also saying that the values of all of those are to make sure that people are equal people can enjoy those rights and people can enjoy the freedoms that have been given uh, by the constitution and by the democracy that is 25 years old today so where we come from is to say that let's look at the environment, whether uh, that environment of democracy has actually created institutions, has created opportunities for everyone to begin to express themselves in a manner that is making sure that everyone is actually free to affiliate to any political party and make sure that those political parties are actually beginning to observe participation of women equally. And this is where the commissions and other chapter nine institutions yeah. come in, like human rights and gender equality. If I can just take you a little bit back, uh, before 1990, um, in 1999, up till now, the Commission for Gender Equality has been monitoring closely uh, the political parties and the elections, just okay. to make sure that there is equal participation of women in politics as well. As it happens on this show, because we're a breaking news show, every now and again comes a situation, and today we are putting an eye at the uh, at the Owar Tambo Airport. You can see there's live footage. Sarah Kumalo is expected out any moment now. A, a hero, a not only a South African but an African hero, because even though she's South African, she's got Zimbabwean origins, and uh, she's the first woman um, to summit. Um, you know what other people have tried and couldn't and as we reported um, and uh, as we said before other people have actually died 
uh, trying to uh, effort the same summit. But there's Sarah. Oh, she's arrived. All right. Um, I'm going to have to hear from my production team if we're going there live. Oh my word, it's so interesting that we're having a conversation about women and their participation in society. And here is an amazing woman who's just arrived back uh, and uh, there's so much pride in the nation. Uh, what, are, what are your feelings? Oh, that is awesome to see it happen live and, and, and to witness it and to see that it's actually happening, you know, that, that there's women out there that we can look up to because we need leadership in this country. We need women to look up to demonstrate what can be done. So it's amazing to see. It's yeah. a proud moment. All right, we're going to continue our conversation with that footage in the background uh, because it's a real celebration and we really want South Africans to share in that moment. But we're going to continue our conversations as well. Sia. Um, there's been a lot of conversation in South Africa about the wasted nine years. And one of the streams of that conversation has been that uh, 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 non-governmental organizations have been sidelined. So as a result, they just haven't been doing much work. But the new president has stated that he wants to work with non-governmental organizations so one imagines that uh, you're all out there going back to your drawing boards to decide how you want to influence conversation going forward in terms of not in my name what sort of contributions do you want to make to this new dispensation thank you very much once more for that question i think it is important to note that not in my name uh, not only as a campaign, but as a movement, has been endorsed uh, by the current sitting president of, of the Republic of South Africa. While he was still the deputy president, um, I, in 2017, uh, he actually endorsed and launched the campaign in Randberg. So uh, we are looking forward to working with uh, his new administration and with the president himself, because we have seen his commitment, um, and that is why we support him. Uh, you'll, you'll remember the summits that were held last year, uh, with, with, with other women in the country. So it's not, not in my name, South Africa. We're opening up our doors and we're making our um, little resources available to the people of South Africa and we are opening up ourselves for um, active partnership to make sure that we work with all uh, relevant uh, stakeholders in the department, different departments, especially the Department of Women in the Presidency, as well as the Department of Social Development and other uh, uh, law enforcement agencies as well as NGOs. Uh, what we want to say is um, we want to open up a conversation and bring uh, fellow men into the table to discuss uh, what exactly it is that uh, is perpetuating this uh, uh, toxic masculinity which seems to be a problem today and that honestly will begin with us having a conversation with ourselves and amongst ourselves that says to us we are the beneficiaries of this system and we are fortunate and privileged that, that uh, this uh, current system places us on the top of the societal hierarchy and it, 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 it perpetuates uh, this gender inequality because it strives on, on male supremacy and female subjugation. So we are saying as Not In My Name South Africa that we want to bring forth um, and be actively involved in policies and the implementation thereof that will make sure that South Africa is a progressive and a gender equal and equ equitable society. Mabel, let's bring you back in again. We're in a situation where there's multiple commissions of inquiry taking place because of uh, the lapse in governance in most institutions in South Africa. And you're at the public governance uh, uh, division at the University of Cape Town. What sort of conversations are taking place? around strengthening governance, especially amongst women leaders. We know we've seen most of the leaders who are said to be corrupt mm -hmm. are male. Every now and again, a woman's name comes in. But are you even having conversations about strengthening women in terms of governance? And that's a, a great question. Um, in fact, our work um, is to str strengthen strategic public leadership across Africa. And one of those, the key areas that we're looking at moving forward um, concerns democratic governance within South Africa. And to that effect, we're in partnership with the South African Local Government Association 
uh, in delivering a program targeted at women leaders, both current and aspiring leaders that want to get involved uh, at higher levels of decision making within local government, equipping them with the necessary knowledge, skills and tools that would uh, empower them to take on these roles with, with courage, with grace and confidence. Um, and another program we're also running is the Women Influence Power Program with an emphasis on leading in public life in the rule of law sector. And as we've seen in the past, uh, women like Professor Tuli Madonsela have been instrumental in holding the line of accountability and integrity in South Africa. And there are many women like her rising through the ranks. And uh, one thing to recognize is that the youth voice and young women's voices also need to be a part of this dialogue as they innovate, um, as they work at the grassroots level. Because there are, I think, two levels always to addressing an issue. One can focus at the nexus of power and politics with central government and political parties, for instance. But at the grassroots level, civil society, um, and, and activism at that level is also very powerful in influencing change within communities and perceptions within communities. So um, we're, we're proud and, and, and very happy about the strides that our Vice Chancellor, Professor Mamogheti Pakeng, has led already with a woman-led executive at the University of Cape Town, something that is historic. And seeing women leaders in all spheres of life leading confidently, capably as well, is something that I think and that we believe will continue to influence change in society. Stories like Miss Kumalo coming down from Mount Everest and the first fighter pilot flying over the inauguration on, on, on a Saturday. These stories inspire younger women as well and children to a new culture within the country that respects women and knows that they can make a significant contribution. Dr. Davis, we're having a conversation today about recognizing equally both genders. And you're saying it's not about genders, it's about re uh, recognizing humanity. How do we get to that? Do you have solutions in terms of how do we get to that place without disregarding the fact that women have uh, been shortchanged in the past? Well, we've got a long history of women being shortchanged, and we also know that since the Beijing Convention in 1995, that far very back. few countries that have made much mm. progress. Yeah. So we are very much aware of that issue, which is the male-female issue, yeah. where, where we need to address it. And we understand that the scope has broadened, but it's going to be an educational journey. I'm fortunate and privileged to work with many powerful women at University of Johannesburg, strong academics, and I know that we're implementing it in part, as part of our educational programs. Across disciplines, across faculties, we yeah. are talking that into the classrooms. We are sharing those perspectives with our students and we're engendering their passion to understand the concept of equality. It is very much an educational journey that we're on and all educational institutions are involved in it to some extent. So we, let's say for argument's sake, the parliamentarians are walking into parliament now. They are our new representatives, but they want to express to the nation that I'm here to serve, but I'm also not a woman or a man. Uh, I have gender fluidity. Yes. How do you think this new dispensation is open to that? It has to be open to that because we have got this um, uh, we requested by the United Nations Global Compact. You'll hear it on the news. They've launched that campaign. They have um, implored all stakeholders to start embracing yeah. the gender identity because we understand it's a gross violation of human rights to discriminate against people in any form. And gender identity for pure ignorance is no excuse to discriminate against other people. And we need to see that in the leadership coming forward. We want to see those different gender roles, gender fluidity, mm -hmm. as an acceptance and demonstration of empathy and yeah. embracing human rights. Tamara, from the Commission of Gender Equality, you're very well placed to set out the scene to say, these are the things that should be happening for us to reach that state where we can say, we are equal, we are all equal in South Africa. What needs to happen? First of all, I think there needs to be quite a lot of awareness raising. Um, I think most institutions that we have worked with, because we, we partner with a lot of institutions, ours is not to implement but to monitor 
and to change legislations. First of all, we need to make sure that our legislations are constantly speaking to the issue of uh, promoting gender equality and promoting women empowerment in all the legislations that we talk about, be it, um, you know, uh, legislations that focus on, um, you know, on quite an array of issues. Uh, quite now we're speaking of the reviewing the, 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 the traditional courts bills yeah. and, and all of those legislations. I'm going to ask you to old and new. just yes. uh, because of, we, uh, of time constraints, I'm going to mm. ask all of you the same question, starting yes. with you, Sia, yes. and then Mabel. Um, the big conversation now is the new cabinet. Mm. What do you hope to see in terms of women composition? See a quick, a quick one. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, what I'm hoping to see, as I said earlier, is that I hope that all uh, genders will be represented fairly and uh, but also to caution that I think the people that are supposed to be leading us that the president will be choosing for his cabinet are actually going to be based on merit and their qualifications and their capacity to build and, and lead this country not only on the basis of gender but at the same time we're calling on the president to say that he must make sure that preference is given to everyone and anyone equally. Thank Mabel? you very much. Yes, um, with an incoming cabinet, I would say we would like to see a cabinet, of course, that is 50-50 or 50 plus, and that we could echo some of the work and the strides that we're seeing on the continent, like Rwanda and Ethiopia. Rwanda, which has over 60% representation of women. And beyond representation, to see that women's voices are included in policies um, and programs at, at the lowest levels and include that gender equality is, is, is the golden thread that ties these together Dr. beyond Davis? just um, numbers, making the conversation operationalized <laughs> through policy. I would like to see that the new leadership partners with non-government and private sector organizations to make sure that employee well-being programs accommodate the gender equality very specifically, addresses gender-based violence and sensitizes South Africans towards all the gender identities that exist out there. Ms. Matebola? I would like to see gender representation um, uh, in the cabinet, but not only in the cabinet, but also in other spheres of government. For an example, we had a big issue with the premier uh, leadership, and we, we questioned that, uh, that. And what we would like to see is that we would like to see gender equality fully translated into policies, into programs, but also into in, you know, the budgets that are actually coming. We were a bit disappointed uh, by the budget speech this year, yeah. and we want to make sure that the next budget speech actually incorporates gender equality and gender inequity for everyone. Let me say thanks to all of our guests. This morning would have loved to talk some more, but unfortunately time constraints didn't allow Tamara Matebula, acting chairperson of the uh, Gender Commission for Gender Equality, Dr. Corne Davis from the University of Johannesburg. Quite fascinating insights there. Mabel Nedelov Sitole uh, from the University of Cape Town. Thank you so much for your time. And Sia Gentile, the president of Not in My Name. Thanks to all of you. Let's